Hello, my name is Karthik Chandran. I'm a professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Engineering at Columbia University. I, I work mainly on the interface between environmental microbiology, molecular biology, and uh, environmental engineering. Uh, the, the main applications of my, of my work relate to, to clean water for sure, but uh, clean water as tied to uh, well, the implications on uh, energy utilization, the, the chemical uh, utilization, resource footprint, and also, uh, let's say, emissions associated with the, with the clean water infrastructure. With the enterprise, with the enterprise of, uh, of clean water as well. To to ask and answer these questions, we essentially we tie together principles of uh, bioprocess engineering, uh, biological engineering, and microbiology and molecular biology. In terms of the WNRF projects that I've uh, been fortunate to work on, uh, one of the earliest projects was to uh, to develop uh, uh, the greenhouse gas footprint from wastewater treatment plants, and specifically in terms of greenhouse gases, our focus was nitrous oxide. Uh, greenhouse gas, which is 300 times as bad as CO2, and it's, uh, nitrous oxide is also especially bad because it's uh, the most potent ozone-depleting substance that we've been uh, discharging into the atmosphere this century. This protocol has been uh, disseminated globally uh, uh, through WNRF, through the Global Water Research Coalition, and uh, I, to my knowledge, there, there have been uh, researchers in Europe, in Asia, in Southeast Asia, in Australia, in, uh, in South America, and, uh, and uh, now most recently in Africa, measuring the greenhouse gas emissions from, from uh, wastewater treatment operations. Uh, this was more on the nitrogen side. Uh, there was some link to carbon and nitrogen. And then in 2010, uh, through the Paul Bush uh, Award, I really began to explore the links between carbon and nitrogen, uh, in uh, carbon and nitrogen cycling in wastewater treatment systems. And uh, for this project, what we explored at the point at that point, and now we have developed the technology. Uh, the technology is to use ammonia oxidizing bacteria, which are traditionally nitrogen cycling bacteria. My name is Luis Arellano. I'm a postdoc in Chandran Lab. So far, I've been involved in two projects. In my first project, I researched the influence of hydroxylamine. Hydroxylamine is a key intermediate compound in the ammonia oxidation process, and it is also the ultimate energy source for ammonia oxidizing bacteria. Now, I'm doing a different project with pure culture. Now, we are investigating an alternative to typical denitrification process. So, in some specific cases, you can have wastewater with high concentration of sulfide, and you can use this sulfur to remove nitrogen from wastewater. Now, we are looking for opportunities to improve this process and also to fit this specific um, experiment into the existing facilities. Okay, my name is Catherine Moore. Um, and I've been working on a project related to inhibition of nitrification um, and the use of molecular biology tools uh, to understand and perhaps better predict inhibition um, by things like heavy metals. So we've looked at bacteria that are relevant to be in our system um, in both fixed and pure culture and um, apply things like gene expression assays to try to understand what genes respond to inhibition um, and with this, we get a nice specificity looking at what organisms are affected and also uh, what mechanisms. For the partial denitrification reactor, we are very limited carbon source. So the nitrate reduced to nitrate, and then there is not enough carbon source for reducing nitrate to nitrogen gas. As we can see, there are two reactors here. One is partial denitrification reactor, and the other one is the animal's reactor. For a partial denitrification reactor, the main reaction is reduce nitrate to nitrite, and then we use the animal's reactor to remove the nitrite, which accumulate in the partial denitrification reactor. My name is Yu Chen Su. I'm a PhD student in Professor Kati Chen's lab. I'm working on bioconversion of the hand methanol using ammonia as a bacteria. In this way, we want to reduce the you know, at that point, we had been studying denitrification for 150 years, and we had very, very few studies which could answer this question, perhaps because it had rarely been asked. And we really focused, uh, this was of importance to worth subscribers, because at that time, in 2007-2008, uh, the price of natural gas really skyrocketed. The price of methanol is directly tied to the price of natural gas, and at that time, Wastewater treatment plants or water resource recovery facilities didn't even have access to methanol. So then the question was, could they start feeding a different carbon source, and could they then, from a very practical perspective, could they meet nitrogen limits? 
And so that, that's, if you take a, take a step back, then the question really is, who uses what carbon source in acting with sludge, and can the same organisms use methanol and other carbon sources? And so that's where we started. We, of course, figured out uh, the answer to this in terms of who eats what car, uh, car carbon source during denitrification. Uh, we had to develop and adapt a very advanced technique, uh, but we did, and applied it to real wastewater treatment systems. Now, th from this project, we, we, we took two, two branches. The, the first branch was uh, uh, understanding not just who eats what carbon source for denitrification, but also who eats which uh, carbon uh, compound pertaining to the degradation and metabolism of emerging contaminants. So, so then the question was, who eats bisphenol A in activated sludge? So bisphenol A is a plasticizer that we find in just about any, uh, just in any material. Uh, and so the question was, uh, uh, sorry, uh, bisphenol A is also an endocrine active substance, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's being considered for regulation, and so we wanted to answer the question, who eats bisphenol A in activated sludge, and can the same you know, regular garden variety activated sludge organisms also uh, consume, can, can also grow. So I'm Shashwat, I'm a PhD student here, and the work that we do uh, here is mostly focusing on resource recovery, in which we look at basically recovering um, carbon that is present in the organic waste streams and uh, channeling it, it into higher value end products of carbon instead of it going to methane as, as it's done in traditional anaerobic digesters. So we specifically focus on uh, short chain acids, which are vol called volatile fatty acids. So this right here is the anaerobic fermenter. So we get food waste and sewage, uh, and then we feed that reactor here, and then convert. We convert carbon into volatile fatty acids, and the, the good thing about it is that it's uh, in liquid form, so it's a lot easier to recover than methane, which is a gas. The, the second direction from the from the carbon assimilation project was we wanted to take this out of the lab. And uh, today we are we are conducting we are almost done with this again in a, a, a WNRF project. Uh, we want to look at wastewater treatment systems around the world, and it's not just looking at who eats what carbon source in one reactor or in a lab reactor or in one field reactor. It's all over the world, and it's now this is a totally different mindset. So we're not going in with a very specific question. We are taking a step back, maybe several steps back, and trying to even figure out the questions, maybe the right questions to ask. And so this we are achieving. By, by using next generation sequencing. And so here we don't, uh, we don't uh, have very specific questions, but we would like to see the pool of, uh, of potential, microbial potential in our, in, our, in our treatment systems around the world. Uh, treatment systems which have been fed methanol, glycerol, acetate, fermented. And uh, the point is to see what is happening in these reactors, what kind of organisms, what are they doing, what else can they do? Not just denitrification, can they do something else? So my project is uh, dealing with uh, anaerobic digestion uh, samples from uh, a lot of the wastewater treatment plants. Uh, so the purpose is to uh, knowing uh, better of the bacteria structure and the functions, we can enhance the resource recovery technologies. This project uh, focuses on investigating microbial community structure, function, and metabolic pathway of engineered nitrogen treatment processes. So the overall goal is to bridge some high priority of the knowledge gaps in applying the microbial ecology to the engineered waste for treatment processes. Uh, and we've, we've ex extended this concept, uh, this next generation sequencing, uh, what we term omics uh, or a systems biology approaches uh, applied to wastewater treatment systems or, or resource recovery systems. Now we are looking at uh, uh, not just the liquid side uh, denitrification, but also the solid side. So fermentation, digestion systems, uh, receiving food waste, receiving sewage sludge or mixtures thereof uh, with uh, uh, with pre-processing thermal hydrolysis or, or other other pre-processing steps. And so this is really what we are we are just embarking upon. We are uh, we are working with utilities in the in the states and outside the states, really to get to get an understanding of the ecosystem of engineered systems, but the ecosystems that these engineered systems foster within the reactors. So something that's really interesting is in the late 2015, in December, two different papers were published that described a completely new type of organism involved in nitrogen removal. And we call that COMOMOX, or complete ammonia oxidizers, which can oxidize ammonia to nitrite and then nitrite to nitrate. 
that's something that usually happens in two different types of organisms that are completely phylogenetically, biologically different. So this is a really new pathway that we didn't even know existed until 2015. And that discovery was really led by next generation sequencing technology in those labs. And that was the only way they could figure out that, hey, we're seeing this ammonia oxidation, but now we can say it's from this type of new organism. In our lab, we've actually started incorporating that new discovery into our research projects. And we look for comamonts now in the different wastewater treatment plant samples and in our own reactors where we previously wouldn't have even thought to look for them. And uh, so this is, a, this I think, covers um, many of the projects that, uh, that uh, WNRF have supported. But I'd also like to then also make the point that this is not just about the projects, it's also about, the, about what has happened in terms of the, the, the process engineers, the environmental engineers that, uh, that this has uh, really touched. You know, the, the, the same researchers, the same students who, who run these reactors, who go into the field and, and uh, interrogate these engineered systems, these wastewater treatment systems, these are the same students, the same researchers who are going into these uh, reactors, into the samples, and trying to really open up the black boxes. So this is really the face of the next generation of environmental scientists and engineers, not just doing the biology, not just doing the engineering, not just designing reactors, but doing all of this together. And this has been, this needs an investment. And I'm happy to say that this, I, I think even in, even within the last decade or so, this investment is, uh, is really paying off in the sense that the, the researchers, the scientists, the environmental scientists, engineers that are coming out are, are, are skilled in all these complementary directions.